Carbohydrates have one primary role in the body, and that is the provision of energy. As we learned in chapter three, our bodies, in our cells, we metabolize glucose through the process of cellular respiration in order to be able to get a lot of ATP from that glucose. Glucose is found in the blood. It's also broken down quite quickly from glycogen as well. And that glucose provides like a ready to go energy source. So it's kind of like a short term energy source. If we're exercising for longer, we need more energy. We're going to dip into our lipid reserves as well. So I like to think of glucose as like ready to go, already packaged. It's already there waiting for you energy. And some cells in the body have an absolute requirement for glucose as a form of energy. Red blood cells and our brain cells are those. In addition to the rules of carbohydrate and energy provision, we like to say that carbohydrates spare proteins. What does that mean? If we do not take in enough carbohydrates from our diet, we need energy. We need glucose from somewhere. Recall that the process of gluconeogenesis helps to break down certain amino acids in order to be able to change them into glucose. Okay, so I didn't eat enough glucose in the diet, I didn't have carbs in the diet. What does my body do? It's like, I can get some glucose, because some cells have an absolute requirement for it. I can get some glucose from breaking down muscle protein, for instance, or collagen protein, for instance. And I can use that certain amino acids to make glucose to, to meet my needs. So, by eating enough carbs, we stop this from happening. On a very low carb diet, you're more likely to be burning through some of your body proteins. And in general, we don't want that to happen because that can compromise a lot of the structural and functional roles of protein. Carbohydrates are also important for the metabolism of lipids. Recall that lipids in particular fatty acids, they're broken down two carbohydrates at a time to form acetyl-CoA, which we learned about in chapter three. And recall that acetyl-CoA typically enters the citric acid cycle from which electrons are captured that can move on to the electron transport chain so we can form ATP. However, in order for acetyl-CoA to enter the citric acid cycle, it needs to react with oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate presence is dependent on carbohydrate intake. If we do not take in enough carbohydrates in our diet, we do not have enough oxaloacetate and carbohydrates to propel the citric acid cycle. So when you're on a very low carbohydrate diet, say a keto diet, for instance, acetyl-CoA cannot enter the citric acid cycle and instead is used to form these things called ketones. And your body can use ketones for energy, but a lot of the times when people are on this very low carbohydrate diet, especially in the beginning, they might experience flu-like symptoms, feel maybe tired or, or odd, <laughs> and they often have really odd smelling breath. So if you've ever actually had a breath that smells like acetone, like nail polish remover, chances are your carb intake has been really low. And because of that, your body is metabolizing lipids through this process instead of the typical way when carbohydrate is available.